So take a look at your opening. It's your setup. Ask yourself these questions. Have you started as late as possible? Have you established the tone of your film? Have you included the goal of your main character? In a short film, the character's desire has to be made clear very early in the film. The obstacles have to show up almost immediately. There's no time to develop an elaborate plot structure like we can in a full-length feature. Let's have our friend Darius take a look at structure in a short film. The short answer, yes and no. If by three acts you mean having a beginning, a middle, and an end, then pretty much every story has that unless it was written by aliens. But if you're talking about the three act structure, as in the blueprint that we apply typically to feature length films, then nah. There's just not enough time for all of that. As I explain plot structures, I'll be using the short film Signs as an example. And if you haven't seen it yet, then you're probably not as cool as someone who has, in which case you can check it out right here. And I highly suggest you check it out because I'm about to spoil the sh out of it. It's pretty good. First up we have this setup. This is the beginning of the story where you're introducing your audience to the characters, the tone, the genre, and the setting of the story. You're pretty much giving the audience all the exposition or all the information that they need to know in order for you to tell the rest of the story. You can set a story up in 30 seconds. You can set a story up in five minutes. It depends on the story that you're trying to tell and the length of your short. Now a good rule of thumb, be as brief as humanly possible with your setup because a common mistake is people spending way too much time on their setup. Because if you got a two minute short film, you better not be spending five minutes on setup, just saying. We open up with Jason as he wakes up to his morning alarm clock. He rises out of bed and goes about his morning routine. He gets dressed for work, eats. Notice the severe lack of a uh, smiling and overall energy. Jason doesn't appear to be happy. On his way to work, he sees a beautiful woman and instantly avoids eye contact. Ooh, shy much? He gets to work. It doesn't seem like he could be any more bored with his job or his life for that matter. On his lunch break, Jason sees another woman and this happens. Without any words being said, we instantly realized that Jason wants a girlfriend. Did you see how his face lit up when he thought that woman was going to talk to him? <coughs> Sucker. <coughs> Jason tries to fit in at a board meeting. It's awkward. More kissing on the subway home. Jason comes home to a very empty apartment and voicemail from mom and dad. You'll probably be out partying with friends or girlfriends. <laughs> Your father's being silly again. We have just seen a day in Jason's life. This is the setup for signs. Two minutes and 50 seconds into the film, we know who we're following. That's Jason. We know what his problem is. He's bored with his life and he's extremely lonely. And we know what he wants. He wants that love. Next, we have the inciting incident or the catalyst. This is where we introduce the main conflict or the big problem that your character has to solve. Or if your main character already has a problem, like Jason, then the inciting incident is usually some kind of opportunity to help solve that problem. In either case, the inciting incident is usually really easy to spot because it's the one event that kind of changes everything. It takes the status quo and shakes it all up. The next day at work, Jason happens to see a beautiful woman in the neighboring building. They exchange timid glances and then introduce themselves via written signs back and forth. So cute. This is the inciting incident for signs. Jason meeting Stacy has changed everything and now Stacy is Jason's opportunity to find love and cure his problem of perpetual boredom and loneliness. Next up we have the rising action. After everything's been all set up and the main character now has his established goal, the rising action is about everything that that protagonist does to achieve that goal and the conflict that he faces along the way. In love stories, this is usually where the relationship progresses and they get to know each other and things get all serious. In general, the stakes should raise, the conflict should intensify, and there should be a build in tension. Note, there can be no rising action without a character or characters who have a clear goal because the tension and the suspense come from watching those characters or that character struggle to achieve that goal. Somebody's gotta be trying to do something. In signs, Jason puts some memorabilia from their meeting on the fridge. Yeah, he wants to get to know this girl. Wakes up the next morning happy as all hell to go to work. We get a montage as the two get to know each other better. Cuteness, cuteness, more cuteness. Days pass, the relationship's progressing. Jason's even happy on the park bench by himself at his lunch hour. Cause he's thinking of Stacy. One day they're staring at each other all longingly when he decides to take things to the next level. He's thinking of asking her, do you want to meet? Then this happens. Ooh. 
Oof, suspense. Stacy isn't just any girl now. Now she's the girl. She could potentially be the love of his life, and she seems to make him happy. So them orchestrating this whole meeting thing is kind of a big deal. That's how you raise the stakes. He practices popping the question to her in the mirror. He rushes to work the next day. He arrives at his desk and he's just about to ask her when he realizes that she's not there. Who the hell is this dude? And where the hell is Stacy? And where the hell is my coffee? Jason goes home defeated. He goes to sleep defeated. He goes to work the next day defeated. The suspense is killing me because we want to see the two together, but it's not looking very good. While at work, some prick shines a light in his eyes to get his attention, and lo and behold, it's Stacy. It turns out she got a promotion, and that's why she was M.I.A. Jason pops the question he's been meaning to ask, and Stacy, being the girl next door that she is, of course, agrees. Which leads us to the climax. We all recognize the climax when we see it. It's the most exciting moment of the film. It's when all the conflict comes to a head, and all the tensions got to get resolved. The whole film builds to this climax thing. Jason rushes out of the office like a six-year-old headed to Disneyland because he's gonna meet the love of his life. They slowly make their way through the crowded New York intersection to meet one another for the first time face to face. The whole short film has built up to this moment. What, what are they gonna say? Jason almost says something when this happens. Cuteness. Last but not least, we have the resolution. This is the falling action of the film where we resolve any remaining tensions and conflicts and tie up any loose ends. The resolution in short films can be anywhere from a couple seconds to a couple of minutes. Sometimes the resolution is literally a part of the climax, as in, it's a part of the same scene. Usually this is common with really short shorts or punchline films, but sometimes it's in longer shorts too. In signs, Jason and Stacy exchange smiles, and then we see them together amongst the crowded New York street cut to black. That's it. That was the resolution. See what I mean? There's no real loose ends to tie up. I mean, they're, they're together. That was the point of the whole short. This would be an example of a short film where the resolution is literally a part of the climax. So that's it. Short film plot structure. While Signs isn't a horror film, most of the rules still apply. Plus, small dogs with pizza. I'm in. The other thing that needs to be established very early on in a short is the theme. Commonly, this can be dialogue spoken to the protagonist that they don't grasp yet. In The Matrix, Neo's customer tells him that he needs to unplug for a while. It's a subtle nod to the fact that he is caught in a simulation. Can you establish your theme? So, we have these structure points that Darius touched on. We are interested in only one today. The inciting incident. This is the important turning point in the very beginning that sends your story forward. As Darius mentions, it may be when we see that the character has a problem, but it can also be the moment that we see a possible solution to a problem already stated. Either way, it sends the story in a completely opposite direction. In our horror example of a character waking up with the sound of something outside their tent, the inciting incident may be the moment that they bolt from the tent and make it safely to the car. It's the inciting incident. Escape is possible except the keys are back in the tent. So what is your inciting incident? Write it out, screenplay format or not, put down this important moment on paper.